we collected millions of observations on uh, everyday use of force that wasn't lethal. We collected thousands of observations on lethal force. And, and it, it was in this moment in 2016 that I realized people lose their minds when they don't like the result. So what my paper showed, you'll see tomorrow, uh, like some of you, uh, was that yes, we saw some bias in the low level uses of force, every day pushing up against cars and things like that. People tend to like that result. But we didn't find any um, uh, racial bias in police shootings. Now, that was really surprising to me because I expected to see it. The little known fact is I had eight full-time RAs that it took to do this over nearly a year. When I found the surprising result, I hired eight fresh ones and redid it to make sure. They came up with the same exact answer and I thought it was robust and then I went to go give it and my god all hell broke loose what's going on everyone it's talks with kenny here today and i want to kind of give my analysis actually uh i want to highlight something that i found out like a couple days ago harvard professor roland fryer says all hell broke loose after studies found no racial bias in police shooting now in the video you saw from the intro he, he talked about how like and i will get more into it uh in this next clip that i have for you but he talked about how much uh, academia uses research to try to prove a narrative instead of the other way around. You should let the research inform your narratives, right? But in liberal academia, I already told you college is a left-wing institution. To me, I see college as an ideological church where you don't go there to learn how to critically think. You go there to adopt the values and principles of an, a political ideology and it's 12 to 1 ratio, it leans towards the left. And many of these academic scholars, and Roland's going to talk about how he was threatened, how people try to bully him not to publish the paper because the research paper, and this is something that a lot of uh, researchers and scientists are sounding the alarm on about academia, is that a lot of these people in these positions in these institutions are trying to restrict research that goes against a left-wing narrative. And this is something I kind of highlighted yesterday with my uh, like my liberal censorship video, is that this is how censorship is used to meet the ends of an ideological echo chamber. And no liberal here, and if you're someone in the middle, a centrist, liberal, no one can debate and no one can, uh, can deny the facts that liberals ha are stuck in an ideological chamber and that people in these institutions are using it and using their positions of power to kind of de-boost, uh, remove uh, contrary views and opinions. And how can a liberal claim that they're objective, they're for the truth, when they allow people who, who are ideologically dominant in certain institutions to control what is permissible and what is not? I don't think that's a, a, a valid or objective argument. And in this next clip, you're going to see why. Let's take a look. It was a 104-page dense academic economics paper with a 150-page appendix, okay? It was posted for four minutes when I got my first email. This is full of shit. Doesn't make any sense. And I wrote back, how'd you read it that fast? <laughs> That's amazing. You are a genius. And I had colleagues take me into to the side and say, don't publish this. You'll ruin your career. Mm. I said, what are you talking about? I said, what's wrong with it? Do you believe the first part? Yes. Do you believe the second part? Well, it's the issue is they just don't fit together. We like the first one, but you should publish the, no the second one another time. I said, let me ask this. If the second part about the police shootings, this is a literal conversation. I said to them, if the second part uh, showed bias, do you think I would, should publish it then? And they said, yeah, then it would make sense. And I said, I guarantee you I'll publish it. We'll see what happens. So it was, it was you know, I, I lived under under um, police protection for about 30 or 40 days. I had a seven-day-old daughter at the time. I remember going and shopping for it because, you know, when you have a newborn, you think you have enough diapers, you don't. So I, I was going to the grocery store to get diapers with the armed guard. It was crazy. It was really, truly crazy. Wow. 
They, 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 and then the left will have the gall to say the far right, uh, the conservatives are radicalizing the youth. Look at this man. This man published something that went against a liberal perception, a liberal narrative. Police have racial bias. And even then, I can kind of argue because you know me on this channel. I believe your behavior drives your outcomes, not your race, not your gender, not your sexual orientation. That That's that's fluff to me. What determines your outcomes is exactly your actions, decisions, and behaviors that you do in your life. And you get the results of that. My argument is why uh, cops will rough up uh, black suspects a little bit more because I think black people, black criminals, are more likely to resist arrest than other races of criminals. Right? And this is the idea that I always try to put out here. And this is why I say the left doesn't like critical thinkers. Because this man literally published something. People agree with the first part because it fit, it fit their narrative. The left-wing narrative that is dominant in college institutions, in academia. This is why college students, liberals like to, oh, uh, conservatives don't believe in facts. They don't believe in the science. When the institutions that's supposed to be providing us new knowledge, providing us new research, providing us new studies... They go out of their way to demonize or create or create a disincentive for people to publish research that go against their ideological narrative. But liberals complain, whoa, well, I don't understand why people cannot trust the news media. They wonder why people like me, a black conservative like me, is so skeptical of liberals. When I find out that liberals are a dominant uh, ideological uh, uh, representation in a certain field, I become less trusting of them. Schools, uh, I, I'm less trusting of education system because I believe that they infect the education system with their worldview, with their ideological bias to condition our students and our children to have a left-wing slant and a left-wing perspective. Just like when you go to church, you have a more Christian perspective on the view. I believe schools are operating the same way for the left. This is why I made the video that progressive education creates mass stupidity. Because they don't care about educating your kid. They don't care about your kid thinking critically about these issues. They don't, think, they don't care about your kid having the ability to question certain movements and, neg and, and, and narratives. This is why these uh, climate groups are so, ho are so uh, hard to push censorship against opposing opinions. Because they don't even have arguments to actually back up the claims that they make about the climate. How you say that climate change is a danger to society when all the predictions you climate changers have been making over the 70 years, 100 years have been proven wrong? How can you make the how can you believe to have the same credibility on the next prediction when all your previous predictions were wrong? It make it make sense. But they don't want to be challenged on the merits of the ideas. They just want to push a narrative. They want everyone in society to believe this narrative and they want to move forward. The difference between me. And people who follow my channel is they know Kenny. Kenny's being honest here. Kenny's saying, "Hey, Kenny doesn't know if he's biased or not, so he's open with it." Hey, I'm a conservative. I'm gonna look at it from my point of view. I'm gonna try to give you evidence, and so I try to make as a best of a case for why I think the way that I do. And it's up to you to make the decision. If you change your mind because you saw this video, it's not because I changed your mind. It's I just pointed out things that you weren't aware of, and it that changed your opinion, not me. See, I forgot. There's a saying. It's a Bruce Lee saying. I know. Weird way. To, weird, weird way to go with the uh, with this video, Kenny. You are talking about Bruce Lee, a martial artist, about a, on a political channel? Yes, I am. Bruce Lee says the the teacher's job is not to uh, show show him like show him how he should fight or how he should be. The teacher is merely a guide, and that's how I see myself. I see myself merely as a guide. Hey, look, this is where I got my information from. And even you, you can play that role for me too. Someone changed my mind about uh, public education system. I'm here sitting here thinking, nah, it's the school's fault that our kids are this stupid. And someone in the comment section corrected me and said, hey, look, Kenny, look at the evidence. Asian students, no matter what school you put them in, they do successful. So can you really blame, put all the blame on public school education? And I said, yeah, you're right. Asians, a, uh, Asians show that parents' involvement with the child is more important than what, what institution you put them in. Changed my mind. Right. And I think that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to have a more open discussion, a more open debate, because this is how I talk to people in my family. This is how I talk to my wife. This is how I talk to my kids. This is how I will teach my kids when they're old enough to have these kind of conversations that we're training, exchanging information. And I, how I see the Internet is uh, uh, this at a more digital and global scale. On this next part, the Harvard professor, uh, Roland Fryer, is going to tell you what motivated him to release the, the paper 
even against the backdrop of all this pressure not to. Let's take a look. I tell my undergraduates every year in the final lecture of my undergraduate classes, each one of them, the key to Harvard is get a great education without letting this place change you. It's really important. It can be corrupting. Every day I have to look myself in the mirror and say, what are you here for? What did you leave behind? I did not grow up wanting to go to Harvard. I wanted to do something. And I, like many others in here, I want to acknowledge that, have suffered a lot of losses in my life. My grandmother is no longer here. My father is dead. I don't know where my mother is. I have, they're all gone. Every single cousin is gone. My favorite cousin, when he, the day he got released out of prison after 25 years, someone walked up behind him and shot him directly in the head. I have to make this journey worth it. I am here because I want to solve problems. I am here because I have seen so much talent in these neighborhoods, and I know they know bullshit when they see it. So I'm not going to lie to them. I wouldn't be able to show my face in these places if I told lies to them, like, oh, I hid this result from you. What has happened with the actual police departments is that because they actually believe the results and they're willing to reform on the lower level uses of force because someone told the truth about the others. The importance of being thought of someone, of being an actual truth teller is so, so very important. Maybe not in the moment. As I tell my students, remember when you came to Harvard, you had lofty dreams of change in the world. It wasn't downside risk protection. Everybody I know who I've seen walk through those ivy doors rocks the boat until they get in the boat, and then they say, steady now. I rocked the boat until I got in the boat, and I said, let's see how fast we can go. <laughs> and I've fallen out the boat, got run over by the boat. It's, it, it is what it is. But you got to be for something. That was an amazing speech. Right? I, I, I wish more professors was like Roland Fryer. I don't have to agree with Roland Fryer on everything. We have different prescriptions. See, this is one thing about me. I don't get offended when people on the comic section disagree with me. I made a video about the red pill. Red pillars coming in. Give me their thoughts, their perspectives. And, you know, we, we hash it out. But I'm not going to hold any, like, spite or, oh, look at these red pillars. I'm not going to be mad. I'm like, okay, they see it differently. How can I make this productive, lead towards some type of solution. Because this is what I believe politics should be about. It shouldn't be about, oh, I want my team to win. This is not this is not sporting. This is not a sporting event here. Right? The aims of both political parties should be focused on how can we make the lives of Americans better and in their and in a global perspective influence the world towards a better and prosperous future. That should be the primary concern of politics. But that's not what politics is today. Politics is about, I want my guy to win, no matter if he's the worst possible option for the country. No matter if this guy is going to wreck us into a recession, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if this guy can't even speak his first name and last name. Remember the last time he walked somewhere. Who knows? The American people should be like nationalism over party. That's how I see the priorities. But what we have right now in our current political climate is politics over national nationality nation nationalism sorry and it is it's the point where a lot of people treat their politi political affiliation like a religion and you saw it firsthand and it's mostly the left the left is guilty of this i'm not going to take no 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 half-ass uh, assumptions or framings or narratives that someone in the liberal camp is going to come in my comment section and try to spin you can't spin this because you, your side dominate college, your side dominates media, your side dominates journalism. And you look at all the all the things that Americans distrust, all of them is from your side. Yet you still want to come in my comment section, liberals and people of the political left, and try to tell me that the right is doing it too? Huh? A conservative journalist is an endangered species in journalism.
That means my perspective and many other conservative perspectives are rare. Why is that? Why we don't have uh, as much of a platform to to express contrary views to liberal world world thought is because liberals, like he stated in his, and that was a good analogy by Roland Fryer, when the liberals get into the boat, they kick out all the conservatives off the boat, bring more of their people on the boat, and they say, "Steady now, don't rock the boat, don't do anything that you're supposed to do with the boat." Roland Fryer comes in, destroys their whole narrative, and they kick him out, roll him over, as he stated in the in the in the clip. It's because they want to protect their, na their narrative. They're like, oh, we got control of the institution now. Now the institution can push our worldview, our values. And they wonder why we're so radicalized as a country, why we're so divisive as a country. It's because the liberals started. The people on the political left started it, right? Conservatives are reactionary by nature. We don't cause things. We usually react to things. Liberals cause things. You come here, you push uh, these narratives, you push these perspectives like CRT, which is shown to give negative results to black students. When the black students are exposed to CRT, their self-esteem go down, their level of self-determinism go down. They start thinking that they can't do anything for themselves because of their skin color. They see no point in actually doing any productive behavior that would give them a better outcome in the future because of CRT and these concepts. But liberals say that's good. They should learn about this stuff. But the results of it is actually hurting the people you claim that you want to help. The road to hell was paved with good intentions, and liberals seem to not understand this. But I digress. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section about this video. Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? And do you agree with the sentiment that Roland Fryer is kind of brought up in this video about exposing political bias and that how liberals seem to not understand that they have a political bias and they can't be honest about it liberals still want to sit here and pretend that they're objective let me know your thoughts in the comment section i'm really interested in this here some of your guys perspectives some of your guys thoughts don't forget to like comment subscribe and i'll catch you guys on the next one peace